As developers, we all know we need to document our processes, usually in markdown format. And we need to make that documentation as easy to understand and as easy to follow as possible. Oftentimes using screenshots where you say, click on this, enter your data into this field. And doing that is kind of tough. You've got to go through the process that you're documenting step by step so you know you're getting all of the detail that you need. But then if you want to go and add a screenshot, you got to stop, you got to make the screenshot, you got to grab that file from wherever it was, put it into your images folder, go and make a reference in your markdown, rename it, do all that stuff. And then if you want to annotate it, you got to go into a different software package, add all those annotations, save that out. Ugh, oh, it's a lot of work. So I'm always on the lookout for products that make it easier to build great documentation. And one that I found recently that I've fallen in love with is Scribe. They are the sponsor of this video. Now to show off their application, I'm going to start with a little bit of a game. Let's see if we can figure out from the images alone in this what this documentation is documenting. So right up at the top here, I can see that we're on the Versal site. I know that because it's got the big ship there. Seems like we're doing something with SvelteKit. Ooh, we're creating a new Git repository. That's pretty cool. And I can see that we go from the GitHub button to the repository name. That's nice. It's nice that those images are combined like that. I can see that I've now deployed what looks like a SvelteKit site. Now I'm over on GitHub. I'm making some changes to that site. It looks like I'm committing the project back to GitHub. And now we've got a deployed site. So what am I doing? Well, I'm using Versal to create a SvelteKit site, and then I'm using GitHub to edit it and republish it. And you probably nailed this pretty early on in that flow just from the images alone. And that's the value that using media like this can help in creating documentation that people really engage with and understand. I don't know about you, but I've seen a bunch of markdown files that are just literally text from start to finish and they're kind of tough to follow. I'm more of a visual learner, and Scribe makes it very easy to create documentation that really shows folks visually how to get stuff done. So let me show you how easy it was to create this documentation in Scribe. Starting my Scribe documentation project is easy. All I need to do is first sign into Scribe. Now I'm on the Scribe landing page, and I want to go create a new Scribe. So I'm going to click on the new button and click on record a Scribe. Now there's two different ways to record a scribe. There's a browser extension, which is free, and there's also a desktop recorder, which records everything you do on the desktop. We're gonna use the free Chrome extension here because all we are going to use in this example is the browser. So I'll hit Add to Chrome, and now we're back in Scribe. Now I'm gonna record my scribe using that Chrome extension. And it asked me where I want to start. I could start with a new tab, or I could start using Versal, which is part of the workflow that I want to document. So I'll click on Versal. Now this is showing me the Versal landing page, and I want to log in. Now I can see that I don't have any projects in Versal yet, and what I want to document is the flow of creating a SvelteKit application, and then editing it in GitHub, and then publishing the edited page. So what I'm going to do is click on SvelteKit first to create the project. And now I have to decide where I'm going to put it. So I'm going to say that I want to put it on GitHub and what I want to call it. So I'm going to call it My Portfolio. And I'll hit Create to create it. Now Versal's created my SvelteKit application, and I can go click on this and see it. <laughs> Looks pretty good, right? But let's go customize it for ourselves. So I'm going to go over to GitHub now, and we can see that it's created a My Portfolio project. So I'll click on that. And one of the really cool things about GitHub is that you can hit the period key and it brings up an embedded VS code right in your browser where you can make changes and then commit them back to the project and have Versal redeploy and show you those changes. How cool is that? Now I want to make some quick changes to the site, commit those, and Versal will automatically deploy them. And I want to show just how easy that workflow is in my documentation. And the great part about Scribe is it's tracking every single key that I press and every time I click the mouse and creating individualized steps for that. Let's go and make those changes. I'm done with my changes. I'm going to go commit those and see that my scribe is amazing change is now up. Now I'm done with my workflow. Let's go and hit the record button, say that we're completing the recording. And now we see our scribe and I'm in the scribe editor where I can go and make changes to the flow to clean it up. And the first one that I like to do personally in my scribe flows is use this magic merge. So over here in step actions, there is magic merge. 
Now I'm gonna say that I want to merge steps. And what this is going to do is look at the images and look at what I'm doing and see if it can squish down those steps so that we get from the 32 steps that we have now to something that's a bit more trim and just kind of intelligently see if it can optimize our flow. So I'll say, let's go. Now I've got a really nice concise flow of 24 steps of what I did to go and deploy this site. So this is a fairly decent sized flow. And I think for most people, it'd be easier if I broke it into discrete sections. And what I can do to do that in Scribe is to create headings. So I just click on this button, I click on the header, and I can say, creating the project. And then I hit the check. Now I can see that I've created the project. I'm gonna go and edit the project. And then go to this final section where I commit the project and see it updated. Now, as I was scrolling through, I saw a few things that I'd like to fix up along the way. So for example, in this section where I was just typing back and forth and backspace and all that, I was just going in editing. So I can just remove that. And in this step, what I'm doing is just changing out the content. So what I really want to tell people is that you just can change the content to whatever you like. So I'm going to use the pencil and then change the text. And if you notice right here, you're actually getting a before and after image. You're getting the before where they had the original content and then the after where we had my edited content. And that's because I did that magic merge where we collapsed those steps and that created a multi-image step, which is really nice. Now, one last thing I wanna do is show you how to edit images. So let's go down here to our final image. Scribe is amazing. And I'm gonna click on the image icon. And one thing I can do is crop it. So I'm gonna crop it down to just Scribe is amazing. And then I'll annotate it by clicking annotate. Now this little circle indicates that I clicked with the mouse. So I'm gonna remove that by selecting it and then hitting the trash can icon. And then I'm gonna use the rectangle to outline Scribe is amazing. But look at all these things I could add. I can add arrows, I can add lines, I can add text anywhere I wanna put it to add value to those images. And that's a lot more functionality than you're gonna get out of your native OS screen grabbing if you're doing a screen grab markdown flow. All right, let me hit done to say that I'm done with this. And now we can see that we have our updated images. Okay, I think we have a pretty good result here. I'm gonna hit done editing. Now I'm seeing my completed documentation page and this is what people would see if I shared this link with them. And look how clean this is. It's very easy to navigate. We have the number of steps, we have the number of minutes. How long is this gonna take me to go through? It's gonna take me four minutes to go through this documentation. And because I've added headers, you can actually navigate around by just clicking on the different sections. How easy was that? This is why I love Scribe. I put in almost no effort beyond simply doing what I wanted to document and the results are fantastic. But I'm not done yet. Now I wanna share it with people. So let's click that share button. Of course I can simply email to people by putting their email in here and what they'll get is a link that they can go to where they can see the page that I just showed you. Or I can click this smart embed button. Now what this does is give us an iframe that we can then embed in any HTML page. If you have a WordPress site or you have a Confluence page or whatever, you can just drop this in there and you can now have a version of the documentation that's embedded in that page. But what does it look like? Well, we can go and click preview embed and see. And what we get is a different layout again, where we had the linear layout before, now we have a slide style layout where we can go and say, get started. Now it gives us a step-by-step -step view of how we go through this documentation with our images and all of it. It's the exact same documentation as before, but packaged in a different way. And that's fantastic. You're not gonna get that from a simple markdown documentation or from a video that you might create. What Scribe does is it actually understands your documentation flow. You've created a semantically rich document there and you've got now different ways to present that document. You can have the linear flow that we saw before or you can have this slide oriented layout. But if you wanna see that linear flow, you can just click on this button and we can see the entire documentation listed out just like before. But that's not the only way that you can export this documentation. Let's go take a look at some other options. I can go over here to export, and another option I can do is to export it as PDF. Now I can view my PDF, 
And look how good this PDF is. And all I've done is taken a few minutes to just work through my workflow, recording in Scribe, make a few edits to that Scribe after doing that magic merge. And now I get this fantastic result that's at a quality level that I can share with my boss or my team. And if they have comments or suggestions to make, I can go make those and export another PDF with those changes. Mm, really nice. But I think the one you might be most interested in is the Markdown export. So let's go try that. I'll click on export, and that's going to give me some markdown that I can then copy the clipboard, take over into my project that I created. Now I'll go to the top level directory, create a new file, paste in my documentation, and then VS Code has a markdown preview, so let's try that out. And now I've got my documentation again, now embedded in my project, but this time as markdown, and I can go and make any modifications that I want to here. But interesting to note, all of the images are managed by Scribe, which is fantastic. Now I don't have to worry about having all of those images embedded in my project. They're just all ready to go, and Scribe handles maintaining all of those assets. Let's take one last look at the Scribe site, and now I can see in my list of recent projects the projects that I just created. I hope this helps you understand why I'm so excited about Scribe and why it's so great that they're not only sponsoring this video but other videos on this channel. What Scribe does is provide a multiplier. So for a given amount of effort where you go through your workflow and then doing some very small edits after the fact of your Scribe workflow, you get a huge output. You get a page where people can go to, you get an iframe that you can embed, you get PDFs, you get Markdown, you get whatever you want. It's a fantastic tool that helps accelerate that documentation workflow that's kind of a drag otherwise. A big thanks to Scribe for sponsoring this video. It's companies sponsoring videos like these that allow me to offset the cost of doing open source videos and bringing all of this to you. If you want to join me on Scribe, go to scribe.how slash jack harrington. A link to that is in the description right down below. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to also put those in the comments section way down below. And of course, in the meantime, if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.